inner child healing for men. Why just men? Because there are already so many clubs for women when women can reconnect with her feminine energy. Because women of course also like to adapt to a world that is dominated by masculine energy. We as men, we tend to just suppress a lot of our things, our thoughts, feelings and emotions. Most of the time we don't even talk about it with our real partner in life. We don't even talk, without, talk about it with our, with our mates, with our family members, our brothers. We just swallow it, we suppress it, we neglect it. And then we wonder why so many men are struggling with mental health and why so many men, because they can't really seem to open up with these things that are still carried within them, simply just had enough of life itself. Inner child healing has been a lifelong journey path for me until this point and still am a work in progress. So what I can share from the need for my own healing journey, it's a moment to stand still of where your child felt, let's say, a sense of betrayal. When there was a sense of trust like things should have happened in a certain way that simply did not happen. So we were betrayed in trust, which is the beginning of a certain level of trauma. Now, you could also say is that perhaps things should have happened, but did not happen. Let's call it emotional neglect. C-E-N, childhood emotional neglect. I've made a video quite some time ago about why do we feel so numb. Then we have of course the elements of emotional abuse, physical abuse, different levels of abuse. So these were the things that did happen that should not have happened to us. So once again, a betrayal of trust. Then we create, let's say, later on, we create these three levels of coping mechanism. Like we think we are okay, we survive in the head, but we are disconnected from ourself, our physical body, our minds, our spiritual, emotional body. And then we feel, let's say, disconnected and uprooted within our own inner self. The child is hurt, but the adult creates a package around it, an armor around it. So when did I start to realize that I was like building up a very thick armor around my soul? That was basically when I was around, let's say, 25, 26 years old. I was hustling, I was grinding, I was like in the mode of the warrior. I was getting out in the world, I wanted to build a business, go after my financial freedom, independence and I just wanted to make money online, that's it, no matter what. And during this process I had some narcissistic tendency that I of course learned from my upbringing as well that were basically like kind of like passed on. And I did everything to achieve that. And once I achieved that, which was obviously like a motivation to prove my worth for accomplishments. So what we can go into is two different ways. Number one, we go externally. We move forwards. We felt neglected. And what we do is we do everything what again, that's within our power to gain power. To gain power over our external situation. So we always working from the outside in instead of from the inside out. Once again, we are not really come from within and then our external world starts to reflect our inside out. Now we look for things that are outside of us, like wealth, money, power, validation, recognition, Material things that can identify a level of status, of success. Women, that looks like that's something, that's a person that needs to walk 
besides me because she looks pretty so the world will think I'm very successful. So we do everything what we can to build this external image and facades to once again neglect something that still exists within us, that is stored within our nervous system. We do whatever thing we can to maintain a reputation, a level of status, but once again disconnected from that. And because of this emptiness or void that exists within us, we can only go so long until shit hit the vents, we hit a physical disease when the body really is telling us to pay some to pay really attention of what still exists within us or mentally emotionally spiritually we go through a dis-ease and discomfort we are not at ease within ourselves. so that's like a trigger a warning sign like we need to start paying attention to something we have neglecting for so long now we're only talking about, let's say, one coping, coping mechanism and that is, let's say, of the perpetrator. The person that cannot feel any kind of empathy or sympathy or compassion for oneself. There's so much of emptiness, like a massive void, like a big hole in our soul that we try to plaster up. And we do whatever we can, once again, to maintain an image a status and that also means is that hey we will hurt everyone and everything that comes along our path that is going in our way for maintaining that image so it's a power control drama we are playing like a li little bit narcissistic as well it's very empty until we get this trigger, like something is really wrong for us. So of course you can go in the mode of the overachiever, let's say an unhealthy overachiever. Of course it's, it, you can achieve beautiful things if you work from the inside out, instead of working from outside in trying to get some sort of validation. So you work, you're really focused on being an overachiever. You hit burnouts, stress, anxiety, depression and the body is really telling you like you need to rest that's the opposite of depression and once you experience that and you have not completely healed of course you can also go the complete other side of the spectrum which is the very passive man the nice guy the pleaser, the highly sensitive empath that wants to make everyone comfortable but is not comfortable within himself that's really where you can experience things like indecisiveness or lack of clarity or focus or determination or discipline or you just are a bit like a wanderer you, ha you sometimes act from an impulse but nothing is very rooted or grounded where you speak from a sense of this is who I am. So that's completely the other side of the spectrum. So basically we have three different coping mechanisms. We cover two. Number one is of course the perpetrator. Become an overachiever through power control dramas. Narcissistic. Then of course we have the people pleaser. Who once again goes over his own boundaries. The Mr. Nice Guy syndrome. Of course you can be nice. But you've got to have boundaries for yourself. And then the third one is the person who hides. Who hides in isolation, loneliness, depression, being in a very dark state. Who is weakening himself through artificial stimulation. I'm sure I can make a list for you, but I'm sure you know exactly what kind of artificial stimulation do I mean? So once you become aware of that, you gotta go and allow yourself 
a moment to relax so you can reflect take a step back so you can step up in self-awareness consciousness because that's really where the growth then begin for my personal example you can go on a journey a med meditative journey and healing journey and transmission perhaps where you go deep within yourself a meditation where you can start to envision a stage of your life where perhaps something should have happened but did not happen or it did happen to you that should not happen happen to you abuse or neglect in my case as I recently moved back here to my ancestral lands in the Netherlands, this old 16th, 17th century town of Middelburg, which was a very important historical town during the 16th and 17th century, during the time of the Dutch Empire, the VOC, the East Indian and West Indian Company. I have a very direct ancestral lineage during that time. So my healing work is not only from this lifetime, it goes beyond. But for the, to keep it very focused right now in this video, we're talking about the healing elements of this current lifetime. So let's journey and envision to a place where trauma occurred. In my way, in my case, it's basically just outside my house, my apartment. I go walk around, get out of the streets, listing sustains and I go around the corner and I see a big building the courthouse I was invited there when I was 11 and a half years why because my parents went through a divorce I was living with my mom but I did not like where I was living I did not like where this was going my mom decided to move out of my comfort zone my town where I was growing up she decided to move to another side of the country so I felt a sense of unsafety so what did I, what did I did I run away I run to my father and after three times eventually my father decided it's time to hire a lawyer to see if we can win the custody in that case also children needs to go and see the judge so the judge can decide whether this is something the child really wants or not or whether this is some kind of conspiracy created by one parent and children can only do this when they are 12 years old in the Netherlands I was invited to the courthouse when I was 11 and a half years old I came out of this courthouse and what happens? My father had an argument with his lawyer. Why? Because we lost that case in courthouse. I was sitting there on this kennel and I was feeling very defeated. I was defeated because I felt my free will was taken away by a greater organization and system like an authority that had control over me my sense of power was taken away my free will was taken away and I could not make a choice the freedom of choice was taken away that's what I felt and I felt defeated I felt powerless and this pattern became ingrained within my nervous system within my consciousness that has played a role throughout my whole life being indecisive or feeling a lack of control and direction over my life or having loads of different ideas and impulses yet I can't seem to focus at one of them like I can't make a decision I can't seem to make up my mind on what to focus on that is going to give me a sense of security or stability as these two things has also been stripped away from me as well so safety security freedom of choice has been stolen for me 
That was the experience when I was 11 years old. When I was 12 years old, we went to the higher courts because the higher courts had to review our decision once again. So that was my second case in courthouse when I was 12 years old. And in some way, we won this case in courthouse under the condition of going through a child protection scheme where someone from child protection services came to our house to check in to see how the relationship was between me and my father. This lasted until I was 16 years old. My father was furious. He, he, all he did was fighting against this authority, against the system. This fighting has corroded a part of his soul. And there I was in his household. Would he come home feeling furious about whatever the event or the occasion was at that moment? Another letter from his lawyer as he also was fighting for my little brother. 16 cases ahead and spending a fortune on these events. His soul corroded even more. So I felt like would he peacefully neglect me so I could continue with my distractions of playing video games or would it be a situation of unease, of violence and distress in the household. This continued to go on until I was about probably 20 years old but I felt I always had to be there as one of his emotional care givers. This gave me some sort of a fragmentation within my own soul and that's where I started to dedicate my life to the healing arts. And this really began back in 2006-2007 which really started to take off in 2012. Once again with major out-of-body experiences and lots of crazy things which was once again a reflection that I was not in touch or connected with my own body, with my own mind, with my own spirit and of course most important with my own emotions because through the emotions we can reach our spiritual body or light body. So it's a process of awareness. This awareness starts of course with some whole things of self-care. Of doing both the physical work, the physical labor, the emotional work, the spiritual healing work, for meditation, self-reflection, personal development, connecting with nature, nutrition, different forms of energy healing, seeking out other people who have suffered in their own way and it might even be better perhaps to search other groups of men to form a band of brothers where we can express the things that we have never expressed before. Because we as men, of course, we are playing a role. We are playing the role of being the protector and the provider for women. So if we go to a spiritual healing group and 80% are women, then perhaps it might not be the best way to really show your vulnerability. As perhaps you could see it as a sense of weakness, which is of course the highest level of strength you can develop. And that strength can only be developed, of course, when you go further and deeper to reconnect with this inner child, because it lives in all of us. Our only body grows older, but not a soul and not a spirit. And all your information is still stored in this infinite library that exists within you and all around us which we like to call perhaps the collective. So you heal your own library of thoughts, feelings and emotions. You play your role 
and let's call it raising the vibration of the collective consciousness. So I'm going to leave it at this for now. For now it's the moment for you, if you really want to share, even if you're a lady watching this and you could relate perhaps from your own partner, then also feel free to share your thoughts, comments, feel free to share this video as this is right now the time for us to really commit and dedicate our work to this practice because this is exactly what the world needs. The world, is, the world doesn't need a demand that you can supply, the world needs someone who came alive. And doing this work can shred off the negativity or the layers of mud that has been covered around your light body. All right, so I'm going to leave it with this one. Hopefully it was helpful and uh, I look forward to see you in one of my next videos. Take care for now, bye-bye.